This video clip is about using the spindle gouge, but before we can use the spindle gouge, let's talk about the wood a second. This is a, a blank of wood. It's just a, a, a cut off piece of wood. The grain is running in this direction. So this is end grain, and this is end grain here. And this is called side grain. We're going to cut on the side grain. First though, we have to mount the piece and I'm going to mount it between centers. When you got your lathe, you got a spur drive like this most probably and a uh, live center like this. And I'm going to set this spur drive. I've made some little cuts in the end of this blank to set the spur drive. And I'm going to set it with a, a, a wood mallet. Then bring up the tailstock. And that piece of wood is secured between centers. Now normally when I'm turning on the lathe, I wear a face shield, a full face shield like this. It's going to affect my voice and, and um, audio on the tape. I'm going to wear a pair of safety glasses like this just for this small project. So I, I recommend not keeping your tools on the, on the lathe bed. Make a little holder or something so you have them off to the side. And I'm going to use this small spindle roughing gouge. See there's the bevel on the roughing gouge. There's the flute. Notice that the tang on this is not round, it's just a square piece of metal. This metal has been formed. And that's not a very strong point. But uh, the way you use this is basically get your tool rest up close, cutting about center, and center on the live center. Turn it on, make sure your tool rest is tight. What I'm going to do is I'm going to put the bevel so that when the wood comes around, it's hitting the bevel. It's not hitting right away, hitting on the cutting surface. It's hitting the bevel. Then I'm going to raise the handle until I get a cut and just bring it across the tool rest like that. Put the tool on the tool rest. Get the bevel rubbing. Bring the handle up until you get a cut. And come across like that. The large roughing gouge would be used in the same way. You want to put the gouge on the tool rest, anchor it on the tool rest, get the bevel rubbing on the wood, and then bring it up until you catch your cut, and then come across evenly with it. One of it's round, just rest the tool on top of the wood. If it's bouncing around, it's not round. No flat spots. It's a piece of pecan. And that's what that tool is for. The roughing gouge is really just for taking off the corners and making it round. Now you could 
You could use it for tapering a bit if I wanted to taper this piece. Um, put the tool on the tool rest. Put the bevel on the wood, bring up the handle and pick up your stuff. Now the spindle gouge has a bevel here, a flute here, and when we talk about turning, we talk about having an open flute with a flute straight up, 12 o'clock position, or a closed flute where the flute is at 3 o'clock. And somewhere between uh, 12 o'clock and 3 o'clock, we're going to turn, generally in the, in the 2 o'clock two position. And what I want to do on this particular little piece of wood that I'm showing you here is I'm going to make a B and I'm going to make a cove, and I'll show you what they are. So I'm going to take a pencil, and that's going to be the top of my B. That's going to be the bottom. And I'm going to put a cove, a, a little flat spot between here, and then I'm going to put a cove between here and here. Now this is the center of my bead. So I'm going to put the spindle gouge and I'll get, see if I can get a close up on that. I'm going to put the spindle gouge on the tool rest, the bevel on the center, and then I'm going to roll it until I start to get a cut and I'm just going to turn the handle like that. Put it on the center, start getting my cut, bring the handle up, and roll it, like that. And so what I'm doing is I'm bringing the handle up and I'm rolling the, the tool over at the same time. When I say rolling it, I'm actually rolling it this way and rolling it this way. Now, you can see that I've, I've made that bead. Let's see if I can come a little bit closer. And I've got some pretty rough edges here, right here. So I'm going to take those off. When you come in with the spindle gouge, if you, if you come in at an angle, it's going to scoot that way or it's going to scoot that way. You want to come in right straight up and down. I have the, the flute at the 9 o'clock position. And then, I'm straight in. Now I have the flute at the 3 o'clock position, and come straight in. And that little cut there defines the bead. Now I'm going to put a cove over here. The cove works in the same way, except that I'm going to put the bevel on the wood at the beginning of the cove. I'm going to pick it up and roll down toward the center. I'm going to stop, come over to the other side, do the same thing in the other direction. And there I have my cove. Now, what I want you to notice is that I didn't try to cut the cove from this side to this side. I cut down this side first, and I cut down this side next. And the reason I did that is that I'm cutting, I'm carving with the grain. I'm not going against the grain. If I cut this way, I'm coming up against the grain, and I'll pull those wood fibers up. If I'm carving this way, I'm carving with the grain and it's, and it's going to cut really, really nice. And at the bottom of my cove, of course, the grain is straight, so I, I'll stop, stop there. Now another um, uh, 
uh, cut on the on a spindle is often just called a V cut. And all I have to do is put the uh, fruit spread the uh, fruit spread up and down and push in. And I can make make that V cut. So we have a bead. Sometimes the flat is called a fillet. The fillet could be smaller, so I can, I can come across with my, with my spindle gouge at about 11 o'clock and cut that fillet down. Come in on the bevel and make that V deeper. And even roll a small bead on the filling if I wanted to. So that's that's the spindle gouge down here. Shallow flute, straight sides. The bevel's about 45 degrees. Now why not use a bowl gouge? Well, let me get a bowl gouge and I'll show you. With the bowl gouge, we have these, the deep flute and these swept back wings. If, if I tried to come in and make a, a, a pass down here for this, this wing here is going to hit that bead. So I, I can't control where that, where that wing is going to go to make a good sharp bead. I can, I can roll uh, a bead, but that wing is for the, which is, is more important than clearing wood out of a bowl, that wing is going to get me in trouble when I'm working on the spindle. The spindle gouge is gonna be my best bet for uh, uh, getting down in those corners because the wings are not going to cut into the piece that I'm cutting next to. So that's the difference between the spindle gouge and the bowl gouge.